brothers and sisters let's pray for a while in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit i look to god i wait for the god of my salvation my god will hear me oh jesus as we have come closer to you we pray that every word we listen to may be a blessing in our life and may bring great anointing in our heart as we go through the gospels we come to know that so many people had approached you to experience your kindness your love your compassion now we also are waiting for you we also are looking to you we pray that the spirit of god may take control of our life now and may help us to fix our attention only on you o jesus we may never take of our concentration our attention from your face amen let's listen to a passage from the gospel according to matthew chapter 14 verses from 13 to 21 so the word tells us now when jesus heard this he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself we know that jesus was always moving along with a crowd wherever jesus had gone so many people would come to him to get cured to experience his compassion his love his kindness jesus was always spending time in the midst of people but now the word tells us he withdrew to a deserted place it means that he wanted to continue his relationship with abba father he wanted to spend some personal time in prayer and he was once again fixing his concentration his attention on his father and now so the crowds came to know that where jesus had gone when the crowds heard it they followed him on foot from the towns now once again jesus came across these people and the word tells us he had great compassion for them because they had come to him in terrible distress in their pain in their worries so jesus was speaking to them jesus once again began to share the word of god for all of them he was for hours jesus became tired and all those people also might have been tired because the whole day time they were listening to the word of god now the disciples they come to jesus and they are asking jesus to send these people away from that place to get something to quench their hunger to get something to quench their thirst and they told jesus it is better to send them to the villages but jesus very specially tells them they need not go away you give them something to eat dear brothers and sisters these words of jesus are very important in our life too sometimes when we are hungry when we are thirsty or when we are in need of certain things of this world we may have a temptation to go away from the presence of god we may have a temptation to take off our concentration from the face of jesus and jesus very specially reminds us that it should not happen in our life we need not to go away from the presence of jesus the gospel according to john chapter 6 there jesus is speaking about the holy eucharist while he was unveiling the mystery with regard to the holy eucharist so many people were there around him so many people were listening to him they did not understand a bit of what jesus had said they asked one another how can this man give us his flesh to eat and chapter 6 verse 60 would tell us when many of his disciples heard it they said this teaching is difficult who can accept it verse 66 because of this many of his disciples 
turned back and no longer went about with him dear brothers and sisters people could not understand what jesus was speaking they began to go to other places they began to seek the help of other human beings and there were the disciples of the lord jesus now was asking them also do you also want to go simon peter was there we you know what was the reply of simon peter chapter 6 from the gospel according to john verse 68 simon peter answered him lord to whom can we go you have the words of eternal life dear brothers and sisters this is a realization that we should have in our life we have no other place to go we have no other people in our life to get the real help so there should be no moment there should be no time in our life when we take off our attention our concentration from the face of jesus psalm 16 verse 8 it's a beautiful word the psalmist with great confidence he would say i keep my eyes always on the lord because he is at my right hand i will not be shaken when jesus when god is there at our right side at our right hand we will never be shaken in our life let it be any situations of life we may be going through great financial crisis we may be suffering from great severe diseases or there may be great unimaginable brokenness in our family life people may not be understanding us and there may be no one to love us let it be any situations of our life dear brothers and sisters it's very important that we fix our concentration we fix our attention on jesus here he told the disciples they need not to go away and the people remained there itself and jesus asked the disciples to bring five loaves of bread and fish to him they brought it to jesus he looked upward once again he kept his eyes on abba father and we know that it was a great miracle the five loaves of bread they were multiplied the two fish they were multiplied and people had the fill of their stomach and the word would tell us they took up what was left over of the broken pieces 12 baskets full dear brothers and sisters when we remain close to jesus we also will have the fill of our life we also will have the fill of our heart the book of proverbs chapter 23 verse 26 would tell us it's an invitation of god my child give me your heart let your eyes take delight in my ways it's very essential to have delight in the ways of god to have delight in the presence of god when we go through this passage when we go forward we would see that jesus was again going to a deserted place to spend some time in prayer jesus was always continuing his relationship with abba father he asked his disciples also to move away from these people your brothers and sisters these people when they had the fill of their stomach they tried to make jesus a king but lord very well knew that what kind of a king they would make him so he wanted to be away from them the word tells us he had dismissed the crowds he went up the mountain by himself to pray when evening came he was there alone jesus was there alone the disciples they were moving through the sea we know what had happened there was a great wind storm and the disciples were really terrified the wind began to attack all of them the waves were coming into the boat and they were feeling that they were at the point of their death now jesus began to come toward them it was early in the morning we read that the disciples began their journey in the evening but now jesus is coming to them only in the morning that means 
the Bible scholars would tell us, Jesus had spent at least six or seven hours together with Abba Father that night. A long prayer time. He was talking to Abba Father. He was pouring out his worries, his anxieties before his father. And now he comes back to the disciples. It was early in the morning. That means the whole night the disciples were alone. The whole night they were trying to escape this wind and the waves. They might have, surely they might have become tired. And when Jesus comes towards them, what happens? They do not recognize him. They cry aloud, this is a ghost. Dear brothers and sisters, the struggles, the tribulations of life did not allow them to recognize the face of Jesus. They had lived together with the Lord for long three years. But now they are not able to see the face of Jesus. There may be certain situations in our life too when we may not be able to see the face of Jesus. But we have to keep in mind that God will never leave us alone. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 would tell us Do not be afraid. Stand firm. It is God who goes in front of you. He will never forsake you. He will never fail you. Your brother and sister says, when we fix our concentration, when we fix our attention on Jesus, we have to keep in mind that we have a God who will never forsake us, who will never fail us. I remember a woman who came here for a retreat. And she was sharing with me her experience in a previous retreat. She came here for a retreat because she was having cancer in her uterus. The doctors had asked her to undergo a surgery. But it was so painful for her to undergo a surgery. That's why she had come here for a retreat. She was praying before Jesus. It was during the Eucharistic hour. She had a particular experience. Jesus filled her heart with the inspiration to spend the whole time before the Lord. To fix her concentration on Jesus. She completed the retreat. She was telling me, Father, I went back home. I entered one of the rooms and closed it. What she was doing there? There was an image of the sacred heart. She was shedding tears before Jesus. She was going through the word of God. Was praying rosary. And she told me, it was very rare that I even came out. One whole week passed. It was on the seventh or eighth day. She exactly felt that Jesus was touching her. The next day, she went to the doctor who was treating her. She shared her experience with him. And this doctor gave a beautiful smile. However, he agreed that we will go for another detailed checkup. The brother and sisters, this doctor examined her and told her, you do not have any disease. You have completely been cured. Jesus did not tell her any explicit word of healing. But the Lord asked her to fix her concentration, fix her attention on him. And she was always looking at the face of Jesus. She was finally cured. She was healed of this deadly disease. 34th Psalm verse 5. We know the word. Look at him and be radiant. No one who looked at him was ashamed. Dear brothers and sisters, it's very important to look at the face of Jesus. When we look at his face, surely we also will be healed. We also will be relieved of our pain, of our sorrow. We see a woman who was pouring out her soul before God. First book of Samuel, chapter 1. It speaks about Hannah. And the word would tell us she was having no children. And it was a great pain for her. So, she was praying before God. She spent her time in the temple. When she prayed, her lips moved but no voice was coming out. There was a priest called Eli. And he thought that she was drunk. And Eli told her, how long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? 
put away your wine. The reply of Hannah was this. No, my Lord. I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink. But I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful passage. So the word tells us, she was pouring out her soul before God. And towards the end, what happened? Then the woman went to her quarters, yet and drank with her husband. Her and her countenance was sad no longer. God had removed the sorrow, the pain from her heart. When we are spending time before God, when we are fixing our concentration on Jesus, the same thing will happen in our life too. He will remove the sorrow. He will remove the pain from our heart. The Gospel according to John, chapter 16, verse 20. Your sorrows will turn into joy. Verse 22 again would tell us, Now you are having great pain, but I will see you again. Then your heart will rejoice. No one will take up that joy from your heart. Dear brothers and sisters, this passage also, the gospel according to Matthew chapter 14, this passage also would tell us to look at Jesus. Here, the disciples did not recognize him at first. But Jesus told, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. See, how God strengthens his disciples. Then Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter began to walk over the waters. Then also the wind was there. Then also the waves were rising up and they were coming into the boat. But now, Peter, a mere human being, he began to walk over the sea. He began to walk over the waters. He was approaching Jesus. Then, when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried aloud, Lord, save me. See, Peter took off his concentration from Jesus and he began to notice the wind and the waves. What happened? He was going into the deep waters. He started sinking into the sea. Dear brothers and sisters, we have to keep in mind that Peter was a fisherman. And this person had known every corner of the sea. Surely, he might have known how to swim also. But now what happened? When he took off his attention from Jesus, he began to sink into the waters. A man who was a fisherman also, a person who knew how to swim also, cannot save himself. He is not able to swim. He forgets everything he had learned in his life. He lost all the familiarity with the sea and he cries aloud, Lord, save me. The same thing will happen in our life too. If we do not spend time together with God, together with Abba Father. If we do not look at his face, the same thing will happen to us also. Surely there will be wind, there will be waves in our life around us. If we are not conscious, if we are not aware that Jesus is there nearby us, surely we will be terrified and we will approach our death. But here Peter cried aloud, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? It's a beautiful scene. Jesus is extending his hands to save Peter. Your brothers and sisters, let it be any situations of your life. The word tells us, the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 1. God's hands are not too short to save you. His ears are not too dull to listen to you. Then, chapter 58, verse 9. When they pray, I will answer. When they cry for help, I will say, here I am. Here, Jesus extends his hands to lift up Peter. So, whatever happens in our life, if we are people 
who are concentrating on Jesus. The same thing will happen in our life too. Jesus will be extending his hands to lift us up. But he will be asking us the same question. You of little faith, why did you doubt? Dear brothers and sisters, if we are a person who believes in Christ Jesus, we do not have the right to say that we will perish. We do not have the right to say that the waves, the wind will destroy us. The gospel according to John chapter 3 verse 16, we know the word. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life and may not perish. The book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 also would tell us, I have a plan for you, a plan for your welfare, not for your harm. A plan which gives you a future with hope. It means that God will never allow us to perish in our life. The only thing we have to do is to fix our attention, is to fix our concentration on Jesus. Here, the last word, chapter 14, verse 33 from the Gospel according to Matthew, would tell us, those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly you are the Son of God. Dear brothers and sisters, there will be moments when we also will realize that He is truly the Son of God. He is the true God. When we are healed, when God saves us from all the wind, all the waves, surely we also would tell that you are the Son of God. There will come time when we also worship Jesus. True worship after having experienced Him. So, this gospel passage would tell us, spend time together with God. Sometimes, withdraw yourself to deserted place. Be alone with Jesus, with Abba Father. And Jesus himself shows it through his life. Jesus himself sets a beautiful example of prayer, fixing concentration on Abba Father through his life. So, spend time before God. And, do not go away from the presence of Jesus in any case. He tells you also, you need not to go away. He will quench your thirst. He will quench your hunger. And He will give you whatever you need in your life. And when you sink into the deep waters, Jesus will be there to lift you up, fix your concentration, fix your attention only on the Lord. May God bless you all. Amen.